Hi everyone, it's Rob Watson, the module leader for Tech 1002, social media and technology. And this is the 23rd uh, short video um, overview of the topics that we're going to be covering in this week's lecture, which is number 23. Uh, and this is an exam revision lecture uh, session where we get an opportunity to uh, look at some of the topics that you've been reading about in the module reading um, uh, this year. Um, last week we looked at, uh, which is relevant to the exam, the, the four topics that we covered last, last week were uh, network culture, collaboration, playing gamification and participation. Uh, and they're, they're, they represent the four compulsory uh, questions that are in section A of the exam. Uh, this week what I want to do is look at uh, four of the sections which are in the optional section and then next week we'll look at the uh, other four. So that's we're going to look at affordances and constraints, spreadable media, collective intelligence and future media. So what I want to do is just kind of give you a bit of an overview of one, the style of the exam and the kind of things that we're going to cover in the exam and the approach to the exam. Uh, and then secondly, some of the kind of key issues that you should look out for and that you should base your reading and your revision around. Uh, so <coughs> the starting point is the books that these are based on is the Delbush and Henderson book, uh, The Participatory Cultures Handbook, uh, the Jenkins Ford, Jenkins Ford and Green book, The Spreadable Media uh, book, uh, Jones and Hafner, Understanding Digital Literacies, and Rheingold, NetSmarts, How to Thrive Online. Uh, these have been listed uh, throughout the year, uh, from the beginning of the uh, uh, way, way back in October last year. Uh, these have been listed on the wiki, and the sections that are relevant for the exams have been based, have, have had an E against them, uh, so that kind of you, you could target your reading about those subject, particular subjects. If you want to look for past papers for the exam, they're available on the DMU exam net. Uh, so if you go to the library website, the DMU, that's at library.dmu.ac.uk and just search for exam net uh, and then search for the Tech 1002 past papers. They're worth looking at. The style's slightly different this year. I've made some tweaks. Um, in terms of the questions, the questions for the exam will... Um, that they'll really focus on asking you to state and identify. This is not the kind of exam where I'm asking you to kind of get into a discussion or an extended description. Uh, so the questions relate specifically to the reading, to the books and the sections of the books uh, that, you've, that are identified and that you should be following on in your revision. Uh, <clears throat> the questions don't call for you to speculate and they don't call for you to explain or discuss the relative merits of the different issues. This is really just about being able to identify and re, uh, reinterpret the key issues, synthesize the key issues that are covered in the uh, individual sections and chapters. So I'm not after uh, for you to kind of give me your personal opinion about things. I'm not after you to relate them to your own experience. I want you to focus on the specifics of what's said in each of the sections in each of the chapters. So in that respect, your answer style can be quite brief. It can be kind of almost like bullet points. I'm quite happy with that. I'm not looking for extended discussion and argument. What I'm looking for is kind of the clarity uh, and the precision of you making the points that are related to the topics that are covered in each of the sections. So don't try and kind of debate anything. Uh, don't kind of weigh up the relative merits of things. Uh, I just want you to get to the point and answer the question, if you like. Tick it off, move on. Tick it off, move on. Uh, <clears throat> you can use examples, and they can be useful, but they have to be impersonal examples that are kind of verified by... Uh, you know, reported uh, observation. So they'll be in the mainstream media if they're an example that's talked about, say, in a national newspaper like The Guardian, The Telegraph, The Independent, The Times, that kind of standard of debate and discussion. We're not talking about, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, uh, popular uh, celebrity-driven magazines, though they might be relevant in some circumstances. So I never say never on those things. I'm just really not interested in you relating things to your own experience at this point. Uh, we, we've got mechanisms to do that. You've been doing that in your blogs. Uh, you'll get a, you know, a, an appraisal of your uh, reflexive assessment uh, when we look at and mark your blogs. So I, the best advice I could give you is think that you're, um, you're writing an entry for Wikipedia. 
You know, that style of entry, that's the kind of clarity that we want, the precision. So stick to the facts as much as possible. So section A is compulsory. So there's four questions there, and that relates to, as I've said, network culture, uh, which is based on the... Uh, <coughs> oh, let me just find it, which is based on... I can't find it. Uh, it's based on um, the Howard Rheingold um, uh, idea about social life and online networks. Uh, the collaboration question is based around uh, Jason Mittel and the use of wikis. Uh, the playing gamification question is based around Jones and Hafner and the way that video games offer a kind of different type of affordance for different kinds of media. And the participation question is based around the Jenkins, Ford and Green question about what it means to be able to share uh, in a, a, a media that's produced in a shareable culture and what derive, where do we derive our sense of participation from. Uh, so we'll go back over them in the workshop sessions as well. We'll be talking about these things uh, in the run-up to the Easter break and then you can do the revision in the exam uh, afterwards. So the first uh, for the four issues that we're going to cover in today in, in this week's session is, first of all, this is uh, affordances and constraints. So this is what Jones and Hafner talk about in their chapter one. Uh, and really what we're asking the question is, uh, how do forms of new media give us an opportunity to make uh, different kinds of meanings with, uh, with digital texts? How do we relate differently to each other? What kinds of social identities are we able to develop and project and in enact? Um, what uh, kind of actions are we able to uh, undertake and accomplish? Uh, and how do we think about how we live in the world here and now, I suppose, uh, if, we're, if you're digitally inf uh, informed? Uh, and if we're socially informed through global networks of information communications, what's different from the way that we did this in the past? And what do the tools that we have bring out and enable us to do? The second section, uh, again, of the optional uh, section B is the spreadable media idea that Je Henry Jenkins chapter five. And I suppose, I suppose the question is in simple terms, you know, what are the main attributes of spreadable media? You know, kind of, it's different from the broadcast age. The broadcast age is kind of planned, centralised, top down. Audiences were given and were expect given things and expected to appreciate it on the basis that they should be kind of grateful or they've paid for it as consumers. The spreadable media model, the sharing media model, is different according to Jenkins, Ford and Green. So how is it that uh, media producers in the future will plan uh, to develop content that will resonate with audiences and that will be shareable and quotable. Um, following on from that, there's the collective intelligence question, which is based on the Howard Rheingold, chap chapter four in the Howard Rheingold book. And we're really thinking about the way in which uh, online uh, life represents a form of collective intelligence. So what are the kind of things of collaborative differences, the kind of collaborative tools that we've now got access to? How do they help shift and change the way that we work as media producers or consumers or as a community of a virtual community of people who are interested in different types of media? How do we share our knowledge uh, and how do we collaborate to make things? In the mass media age, this was kind of produced in isolated production houses and factories. Now we share our media content in videos like this, which are produced in people's offices uh, or in your bedroom or, you know, and you share on YouTube and that's what gets people's attention. So what are the kind of key issues that we can look at? Uh, and Ryan Gold goes into some detail about this that will help people to kind of govern their actions in a kind of a self-governing way. They don't need to be controlled or managed by a, 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 an editor or a boss or something like that. It's something that the users and the participants in a virtual community engage in for themselves. Finally, in this section and for this week, uh, is the issue of future media, and this is based on the Delwish and Henderson chapter 25, <coughs> which is the Paul Taylor uh, chapter, uh, and what he talks about is the kind of difficulties. This is quite a challenging chapter to read. I must admit it took me a couple of times to read it to make sense of it. Uh, but it's worth going through if you like the kind of challenge of thinking through issues like this. Uh, and I've, uh, the, the question is really, 
Now, what is it with clicktivism? Because in order to be political uh, these days, we tend to think that it's a question of just uh, hitting a button, you know, kind of uh, pressing like or sharing an email with friends, that kind of thing. Does that actually change anything? Are we really just kind of um, being passive? And Paul Taylor calls this interpassivity. Uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, we, we sh have shifted from the boundaries of thinking about political action as bringing about real and lasting and significant change based on a set of politics and economic and political relationship, social relationships which are ingrained and embedded. And we've moved to something which is kind of like a kind of flexible kind of uh, response which is based on what we kind of click through. Uh, so often political action can be based on a kind of clickbait model. So just getting enough people to click into something. Is that about bringing real change? Okay, so the um, the structure for the, the marks for each of the questions, they're all weighted equally. Uh, so each question, I think, is worth 15 points, 15 marks. Uh, this brings up your total, including section A and the four that you answer from section B, to 120 points altogether, which then I will calculate as a percentage of 100%. Uh, so I'll work that out and we'll get that to you uh, when the results are released at the beginning of June. Uh, I think beginning of June, end of June, uh, beginning of July. So I'll uh, follow this up with uh, lots of revision sessions in the workshop. Sorry, this is a much more extended video than I normally give. Uh, I will repeat most of this information in next week's video, which I'm about to record. Uh, so the lights won't change. I might put a funny hat on or something like that just to, uh, to, to make it look different. Uh, but I'll see you at the lecture on Thursday morning.